Praise the name of Jesus. It's such a delight to be back with you. Dr. Kilafa Kali here, just thanking all of you on this very special day that the Lord has made. We've already finished our worship and early morning segment of worship and prayer, and we're going to just dive into just a few things before the word comes on. I need you to know that the Lord has a special word and ministry for you today. Yes, that's on today. Happy Mother's Day to all of the wonderful, hardworking mothers around the world. You are so special. We celebrate the mothers today. I want to celebrate my wife, Shalewa, today on her Mother's Day. What an amazing mother, biologically, spiritually, and to so many others. She is just a blessing and has helped so many people with her love and her motherly care. Thank you to my mom, Jane. And Patsy, hallelujah, to uh, Laquita, my stepmom, God bless you, we love you, we're praying for you, and uh, who else it is, all of the mothers who impart into my life, uh, Dr. Turquest, oh my goodness, uh, who else did I say, there are so many people who are Mother Roberts, Mother Roberts, that's right, uh, Mother Roberts from Five Porches, um, Mother Althea Davis from Golden Gates, World Outreach Ministry. Uh, Mother Baird from Trinidad. Oh, my goodness. Who else? Uh, oh, help me, somebody. Mother Phillips from Trinidad Agape. Oh, what a blessing it is to have wonderful women and so many others. I'm going to get in trouble. So many powerful women of God stepped in and became wonderful sources of strength and nurturing to me over the years and I, I am who I am today because of the, of the grace of Almighty God but because also of the great great contribution of so many women who just loved me and nurtured and supported me during the time I love you all you mighty women of God I, I can't get into the teachers I can't get into Oh, the, 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 the motherly people God just brought into our lives, even to today. Happy Mother's Day also to uh, my mother-in-law, Miss Williams. Uh, uh, God bless you on today. May the Lord bless and keep you and cover you today in Jesus' name. And to all of the church mothers, wherever you are, and all of the women who are just mothers. Yes, Daniel, all of the mothers around the world who are praying today prayed over their children, who blessed their children, who spoken into the lives of their children, and who not only did it for their own children, but loved and cared for other people's children. What a joy, what a joy it is to be here celebrating today. I want to thank you all. Today we have a special Mother's Day special. I want you to like this. Daniel, be back. We're praying for India. We're praying for Nepal. We're praying for Bhutan. We're praying as the corona cases, we are extending the love and the prayer and the support uh, into those countries as the battle still rages on. And we are we're gonna be we're gonna be talking uh, very soon as to what to do. Kingdom Apostolic Ministries and all of the leaders and all of our friends and partners in these wonderful nations that stand with us. We're gonna be praying and standing with you. Listen, we have a Mother's Day special. If you are a mother, if you are a biological mother, a spiritual mother, or you're just raising your niece, your nephew, or today all of those who've lost their mothers uh, due to just disease or over the years, we are praying especially for you, uh, those who've lost their mothers. The pain of losing a mother, words cannot express. But we're praying. Shalewa is coming. Just come with me one minute. But we are offering a special today. The kingdom, the power, and the glory books. We're doing a special today. If you call us, reach out to us. We want to get this in the hand of every mother. This is going to show mothers how to pray, how to impart into the lives of their children even more. I know you've been doing it. You want to get these for your life. You want to get these for your family. You want to get these for your children. I'm telling you, it's going to bless your life. Please like this, watch this, share this. Go on to Amazon, buy these books. It's on special. Get a special. Well, if you go on Amazon, it's not a special. But if you call us, if you want a hard copy, 
We are going to be doing a special for these three books today on Mother's Day, a Mother's Day blessing. We want to bless every mother. What some people have been doing as we get ready to pray, some people have contacted us and partnered with us. We thank you for the partners. Every book you purchase, every book you buy goes towards supporting people like in India and Nepal who are, you know, going through so much. I ask you to kindly share this, like this, go on Amazon, buy it, get your hard copies. Or if you want to bless this ministry that is sowing, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, just blessing. We have a book ministry also. People have said, I want to donate 50, 100. Some have done more. They are saying, get these into the hands of people. There are people who want it but can't afford it. If that's you, please let us know. Uh, if you want to just be a blessing, please. You might want to buy a book for someone. $50 can get three of these books in the hands of someone who really needs it. We want it in the schools. We want it in the prisons. We want it uh, in the hands of people who are hurting. You can be a part of that. Whatever seed you sow, we got to take that. And bless that. That's what we want to do on this Mother's Day. We want to help an orphan child. We want to help a child whose mother has been gone and taken away. You can do that today. You can be a blessing. We love you if you can do that today even more. Thank you so much for being a blessing. We're going to pray. The labor is coming. We're going to pray. And this woman of God is bringing the word today. So I'm going to get out of your way quickly. I just wanted to love you all and thank you all. Just want to let you know we are just in love with Jesus. And we just share that excitement with you. And we pray this ministry and this message that we've been sharing is blessing your life and your family and your loved ones. Please share this. Please bless someone else with us. We want them to know we love you. And we're coming straight from the Bible. We want to give you tips on how to empower your life. And if that's a blessing, please let us know. We care so much about you. Let me begin to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those who are listening and watching. Those who are following today, we say blessings and peace and prosperity upon your life. We pray protection upon you and your family and your children this new week. May the love of the Lord be on you and cover you and comfort you. We pray for the mothers. We pray for those to have more strength. Lord, only you can strengthen them to know that what they're doing is a blessing. We pray for you, dear mothers, wherever you are, adopted mothers, grandmothers, aunts, wherever your position is. Uh, we pray strength for you as you do all you can to be a great role model to your family, to your children, to your home and your community and to your nation. We pray strength for you, wonderful women who are making a difference in the lives. We pray for teachers who are guidance counselors, who are being a special role model in the lives of so many people. Thank you. We pray strength. Know that your work is not in vain. Thank you, Lord. I pray for those who lost their mothers, lost their wives, lost their grandmothers, lost their aunts who are feeling it on this day. Those people who are just feeling the pain of losing that special one. I want to let you know the Lord is near to you and he's bringing you comfort today. There's no one that can replace that loved one in your life. And you have a right to remember them and, and think about them. I just want the Lord to just give you the strength today. As others are celebrating, maybe you're going to have to go to a graveside today. Maybe you're going to the, a house where there's just remnants of pictures and items, memorabilia of that mother, that grandmother, that aunt, that teacher, that special person in the community, that woman who helped to raise you, that adopted mother, oh, that stepmother, I pray strength into your hearts today, in Jesus' name, I pray strength into your life, in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, let's just sing a song.
love you, Shalewa. We're going to ensure that everything is set and ready to go. I extend love and blessings to you today. We're continuing our message on the kingdom of God and the love of God's kingdom. As we settle ourselves, I want to let you know if you have a prayer request, please put it there. Or contact us, let us know if we can pray with you, if we can stand with you, if we can support you in any way. This is a trying time, and the end is not yet. We pray for those around the world. We pray right now, Lord, for India, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka. We pray for the nations that are in trouble. We're talking to people in India every day, Nepal, Bhutan, um, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Indonesia. Those areas are hot hit. We're praying for those in South Africa who are also feeling the pinch. Malawi, we're talking with you. We're praying with you. We're praying. We're praying with you who are going through the, the devastation of great loss. None that has been seen in our modern time in the world. In this pandemic, we pray for those. I've talked with persons who have lost their mothers in this pandemic, who lost children. Apostle Yule, Simone, God bless you. We'll be praying. For those who have lost loved ones and family members and friends. We pray, Lord, for the nations that you will glorify yourself, Lord, and you will move speedily. Because there are no clear answers of what to do. So we need a special intervention of wisdom and help from the Lord. We need something from heaven. We need the wisdom of God to empower the scientists and the physicians and the governmental leaders. We pray for government leaders around the world. We pray for the scientists and the doctors and the researchers. We pray for those who are on the front line, Lord, for protection, for special covering, for hope in the midst of hopelessness many times. And most of all, for the solution to bring healing to our crisis. What a dilemma this has been. I pray for the minds who are overwhelmed, the the fatigue, the chronic corona fatigue, the depression, the oppression, the restrictions, the social distancing that, that, that you know, just makes you, on this special day, maybe you might even be able to reach out to a mother, grandmother, because of what's going on. Oh, we pray right now, Lord, for the healing of our land, the healing of our nations, the healing of our peoples, we speak peace into these homes where domestic violence is rising up. We speak peace to the homes where abuse and rape and abandonment and rejection and pain is taking place. We speak hope in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak healing between mothers and daughters, mothers and sons, sons and daughters, sons and mothers. We we speak healing today in families that are broken. Restoration and healing today, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. Uh, we're here in Grand Bahama and we are blessed. But I want to let you know we're just keeping it in our studio as our people around the world are watching on our television networks. I want you to go to uh, YouTube channel and subscribe to K-A-M-I Bahamas, Kami Bahamas. Watch it, like it, and subscribe, and give some thumbs up on our YouTube page. Go to powerandglorytv.tv and watch more of our powerful teachings on there, powerandglorytv.tv. We would ask you to kindly do that, like it, share it. You can watch more of us. We have tons of teachings here on our Facebook platform. Uh, you got the raw teaching as it came. On the other channels, you're going to see it nice and cleaned up, but you're getting straight out of heaven, straight out of scripture, what the Lord has said, and we thank you for joining us. Those who've been with us over the last two years on this broadcast, just on this platform, thank you for your prayers, your encouragement. We've been seeing you, and you've been celebrating some things with us. We thank you. Again, if you want to continue to be a blessing, please go on Amazon. Look for The Kingdom, The Power, and The Glory by Kilafo and Shalema Kali. Please buy this everything. We don't want your, if you want to bless this ministry, please. We'd be happy for you to so call us and sow a financial donation.
that helps us to keep things running and give to the community. But another way is buying these books and buying it for someone else. Hallelujah. And that contribution, we take part of the proceeds and we bless the work of ministries. We help families and homes, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, love God's people, and help our people and nations just on these platforms. So thank you very much for your support. We love you today. I, oh, I, I, I exalt thee. Oh, I exalt thee, Lord. This is our time for worship. We won't be long, but we'll be strong. Oh, I exalt thee, Lord. I exalt thee, Lord. You are worthy, you are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy to receive all our praises. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. Just lift up your hands and begin to worship. We exalt your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord. To receive. So we lift our hands, we lift our voice to worship you, to worship you, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Worship is our part. 
with your hearts and your minds, worshiping the Lord, just continue to lift up a song to Him and express your love and your worship. That's what this is all about. This is singing to the Lord. This is not about a man, a woman, a personality. This is coming to the truth of worshiping the Creator. Jehovah, Adonai, Elohim, with all your expression of love. The Bible said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times, David said, and I say too. His praises will continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For his mercy endured forever. I love the Lord. He sought and heard my cry. He delivered me out of many waters. I love the Lord. Praise is what I do. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. The word is filled with praises. And so we want to continue with that today. This woman of God, I won't delay any longer because I just love the Lord and I will sing all day to him. I'm going to sing this song and then Shalabo is going to come. And she's going to go ahead and continue to teach today the atmosphere and the culture of the kingdom of heaven. You don't want to miss that message today. The atmosphere and the culture of the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, you know what you're singing with me today. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart. My mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with that's why my heart is filled with, that's why my heart is filled with, that's why my heart is filled with, that's why this heart is filled with, that's why this heart is filled with, Bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord with me. Shalewa Kali, my darling wife, has going to bring this word today. You don't want to miss this. This is not going to be a typical Mother's Day message. Stay on board. She's coming to bring the message on how to bring the power of God down. I feel the glory of God here today when she come. She's getting ready. And I want you to stay tuned. Get your Bible. Get your pen. Because if you think I can teach, this is a teacher indeed. She's going to expound the word. Get your Bibles, your notepad, your books. And get ready to be tremendously blessed. Again, thank you. Hallelujah. I know our broadcast takes some time because we believe in diving into the word and teaching the word of God with power. We're not going to just holler and shout in your ear. We want you to get the message. So Shalewa is coming. God bless you. I love you. I'll be back at the end of the broadcast to pray with you to see your needs. I ask you to put your prayer requests here and your ministry as she comes. Shalewa is coming now. God bless her and minister uh, as the Lord use her today and encourage her today. Come please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Hallelujah of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. Hallelujah. I will sing unto the Lord a new song because he is worthy. He is deserving. Hallelujah of it. I want to officially say happy Mother's Day to all of you uh, that are watching us from all over the world, wherever you are. Special mention of Mother's Day. Hallelujah to uh, Pastor the Queen of Cauley. Uh, go, I bless the Lord for her today. And my mom, and spiritual mom, adopted mom, who is there, will be ministering uh, this morning. Minister Williams and Pastor Hudson. God bless all of you so much. I love you. All of my aunties, my uncles, and my, sorry, my aunties and my cousins. My goodness, there will be a day coming for uncles, my cousins. Oh man, our family just have expanded over the past uh, year or so. So my cousins, all of you, God bless you. I love you. Uh, thanks to all of the mothers who have poured out uh, to me over the years. Uh, Miss Linda uh, the Gama, I bless the Lord for her. Uh, she is one I, I made a mention all the time, but she is a wonderful, uh, wonderful mother. Uh, God bless her. And all of you, I don't want to get in trouble from leaving anyone out, but do know that if you have touched our lives in a special way uh, over the years by continuing to pray for us, pour into us, believing us, supporting us, we just love you. We say God bless you. For those who were who expressed motherly love in the form of uh, teachers, uh, uh, Miss White, uh, so many of you, Miss Major, God bless you. I don't want anyone to be left out, but do know that we love and we appreciate you. God bless you. We are where we are because of your support, because you believe in us. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And you encourage us to stand in the things, hallelujah, of the Lord. And so God bless you for all of you uh, this morning. And thank you for watching. Hallelujah. We have already sang. We have already prayed. So we will get right into it this morning. But I just want to give my respects to the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Lord that is here in our midst this morning. And I want to also just give a special uh, honor to my husband, Apostle Dr. Kilapa Pauli, because truly I am here today. He has launched me. Uh, one of the things that he said when we met prophetically in the Lord was allowing the Lord to use him uh, for me to walk into my purpose and destiny and within no time just with submission to the Lord and just trusting the Lord and the process of the Lord here I am hallelujah today I can say that I am his glory even as he is the glory of the Lord I am the glory of him and to our wonderful son, Mali, who just loves his mom so much, uh, saying, uh, telling me to wake up this morning and happy Mom's Day. I love you, all of you. God bless you in Jesus' name. As we continue with our service this morning, we are talking about the atmosphere, culture, hallelujah, of the kingdom of heaven and experiencing, hallelujah, such a wonderful a wonderful thing. We want to get you in the frame of mind to be heavenly minded. Even though you are here on this earth, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We have a spirit, hallelujah, we have a soul that will continue to exist even after this body. This dirt is all passed away. And so, hallelujah, even our flesh should have no control over us. Because what and where we will be in the end, hallelujah, is more than words can express. And so this morning on this Mother's Day, I greet you all once again in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we talk about the experiencing the atmosphere and the culture of the kingdom, Hallelujah of God. I'm just going to take one quick minute for us to do a setup, a proper setup. Hallelujah. Hail. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I want to talk about, as we define these two terms, the atmosphere and the culture. 
culture is defined as the ideas, customs, and social behavior of a particular people or society. Atmosphere is defined as the pervading tone or mood of a place, situation, or creative work, or the ambience, or the character, or the mood. I want to pull out two words from these two definitions, and those two words are character, uh, for emphasis, hallelujah, and the other word is behavior. When we talk about character as we defined it in the uh, definition of the word atmosphere, the character is the mental and moral qualities uh, distinctive to an individual. That is the character. And the behavior is the way in which one acts or conducts oneself especially towards others. It is a response of something or someone to a stimuli. So when we think of atmosphere, an easy and quick way to grasp what we are saying when we talk about it is to think about character. Our character, does our character display a particular atmosphere or what atmosphere, uh, what uh, what mood, what tone, uh, what is the prevailing uh, thing that someone can say about our character? When we talk about behavior, how do we act towards certain things? There's a term in the Bible I just mentioned that says, in the world but not of the world. Therefore, as Christians, we can say, that though we are in the world, the stimuli of the world, which, is, which are worldly things, uh, such as um, lascivious living, perversion of all kinds, they should not be the dominant uh, thing that steers us into where we ought to go as children of God. Also, in responding to those stimuli, as perversion, uh, frolicking, and all of the uh, celebrations of the world, we should not respond to it in a way where it pulls us. We should be stronger than that, especially with the Holy Spirit in us, that we can stand and move that, push that to the side, and continue on our path to greatness, and continue on the race which helps us or propels us to accomplishing what we need to accomplish in the Lord. And so we're talking about, again, the atmosphere and culture, experiencing the atmosphere and the culture of the kingdom, hallelujah, of heaven on this Mother's Day. Consider the kingdom of darkness, beloved, and the kingdom of light. Darkness represents a sinly world. Culture and light represents, hallelujah, represents, darkness rather represents a sinly world or a worldly culture, while light represents holiness and righteousness, righteous living, consecrating yourself. For the past week, even as I prepare this message and uh, thinking about Mother's Day as it approached, uh, I, the Lord and the Holy Spirit just uh, uh, point out so many things to me, especially as re with regard to culture, the way that we are dressing, the way that we are carrying ourselves, the things, the words that are coming out of our mouth, but mainly zoning on the way that we dress. I was looking and watching a few apostolic uh, preaching and op apostolic ministry singing and uh, Pentecostal singing as well. And I realized that the women who are singing, they are fully clothed. They look uh, royal, not old fashioned, but you can barely pick out, you can't pick out and decipher the shape of their bodies. The men are fully covered. You don't, you're not looking at muscles or things that would cause you to think of some type of sexual uh, tone or sexual pleasure or lust or anything like that. Amen? And then I think of certain places uh, where I would have visited or where, would I, where I would have traveled to. And I think, and even looking at photos, I'm seeing women who are singing 
uh, who are leading positions in the body of Christ, in the place that is holy and consecrated unto the Lord, into a place that is called a place of prayer with tights and short, uh, revealing dresses. All of the breasts are out, all of the, the buttocks, the, the gun cases are showing, all of the legs are showing. If that is the case, and we are here to worship and to lift up a God that is holy. And if we ought to see heaven and represent heaven and be heaven focused, then how can this be possible if that is the way we of the world and those who are in the, the uh, who are part of the body of Christ have resorted to things that would reveal themselves to take many of our minds off of the very person who we are gathered to worship, who we are gathered to give honor to. We have to be so careful, people of God, when one decides to preach holiness and righteousness nowadays, they are condemned to be radical. They are condemned to be holier than thou. But I, hallelujah, grew up in my first embankment upon church when I was able to understand and know myself. I was among women, hallelujah. That, hallelujah, Miss Hudson, hallelujah, especially, I would never allow us, even in being around the house, we cannot wear tights as young women showing every part of our bodies without being covered up properly. We cannot go out with a slip and the lining of your underwear as women showing the printout of your underwear, your clothes. That was never, nowhere possible. And if you have a holy and righteous seed in you, which many of us do, because our parents and grandparents prayed for us and we did not see those things among them. Those things cannot be counted among them. No one should be able to tell you or should have to tell you more than once, hallelujah, that you are to dress royal and consecrated and holy, hallelujah, and that your beauty is not defined by your body part, the classification, hallelujah, the shape or manner of your body part, but because of what comes out, hallelujah, of you, the word of God says, uh, the, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, hallelujah. And so likewise, it goes to show, I say that to say, what is inside of you and what is coming out, that should define your beauty, holiness, talks of righteousness, virtue, uh, talk, talks of, of positivity, talks that encourage one another, talk is that shows that you are confident in who you are and you are not confident based on what you have or how you look but you are confident because of the christ hallelujah that is in you can i get an amen somebody glory be to the name of the lord and so as we talk about the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light the two hallelujah signifies time but one is very much greater than the other. Darkness and light, hallelujah, signify time. One indicates the night time, while the other introduces another day and fully dominate during the day before darkness rules again at night. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verses 4, from the New King James Version, it says, and God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Genesis 1, 14 through 18 says, Then God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for season. So we see that day signifies also, hallelujah, season and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made the great, the, the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth 
and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. When there is no light, people of God, darkness will rule. But even in the ruling of darkness, there is a dimension of light reflecting in the sky. Even in the darkest of the night, hallelujah, there is some element of light that is beaming through. As darkness itself might stumble in the absence of light. Think about that for a minute. So you have power over darkness as a citizen of the kingdom of, the kingdom of God. And also for the state of total darkness, it can be very scary and dissatisfying. Imagine if you were blinded for a day, if that were ever possible. Hallelujah. No man stumbles, hallelujah, in the light, except for a blind man who is personally in darkness. Imagine such a thing, beloved. Matthew chapter 6, 22 to 23 says, The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. If therefore your eye is good. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness. Unfortunately, people of God, there are many whose eyes are not physically blind, but have been blindfolded by the darkness of this world. They are under the dominance of rulers of darkness because they refuse to embrace light or are ignorant of the glory of light. There are people who are so used to the night that they refuse to cross into the glory of a new day. I want to bring your attention to a part of the world. I think if I'm not mistaken, well, I don't want to say it, but you can go ahead and look it up. The part of the world, if you know it, you can just type it uh, here on the page, on the platform, or those of you who are watching from different media platforms, you can also research it for yourself. Those places of the earth, those parts of the earth that they only see light a few times of, or a few hours in the day. Imagine us here on this side of the world, this, this where we experience Eastern Standard Time. And I know I'm in India and Africa, those regions, uh, there are also regions where they experience light for a, great, a good part of the day. Imagine those places where it's only like four hours, four to six hours in a day that they experience night. Amen. Most of their time is in darkness. What would we do if we would have to go to such a place having to transition? Uh, when we take those long trips to go on the other side of the world, we have to examine ourselves and keep a, a track of the time. Because when we leave here, it is night and it is very much day in the part uh, where we are going. And so even as we travel for 36 hours, at least 24 hours of that time, it is darkness. So we have to uh, remind ourselves to keep up with our sleeping patterns according to the time so that we can be uh, refreshed and relevant when we go to those places. Imagine, hallelujah, being in darkness and knowing, hallelujah, that you have the power to come out, hallelujah, of darkness. Glory be to the name hallelujah of the Lord. Psalms 30 verse 5 says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes, hallelujah, in the morning. How then can a person choose darkness over light, beloved? How can a person choose weeping over joy? Well, it depends on the influence that a person has chosen to be under. As a matter of fact, everyone used to be in darkness, but not everyone has chosen to remain in this darkness. Those who have chosen darkness are referred to as the children of darkness themselves, while those who have crossed out of darkness to light are called the children of light. In the book of 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5, 
says, you are all sons, hallelujah, of light and sons of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Beloved, you shall not be of the night, hallelujah, or of darkness as a child of God. The book of Genesis tells us that God created the heavens and the earth. And he declares in another place that the heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth he has given to the children of man. Psalms 115 and verse 16. Therefore, hallelujah, as this tells us, there are more, hallelujah, than one heaven. But we will go into that in another time so we don't lose focus from our topic. Jesus Christ, before he died, comforted his disciples that he was going to prepare a place, hallelujah, for them. He said, hallelujah, that in my Father's house, as we talk about heaven and the atmosphere of heaven, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Imagine, hallelujah, as Jesus, uh, we know where that Jesus ascended, hallelujah, he is seated in the right hand of the Father. He said that he is going to prepare a place for us, hallelujah, uh, talking about heaven, hallelujah, and ruling and reigning with him. Why not grasp, hallelujah, such a wonderful uh, thing? It is something that is invaluable and intangible. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. This means that as much as the heaven and the heavens belong to the Lord, he desires that one day we may dwell together, hallelujah, with him. Great, what a great privilege that man will occupy the same place, hallelujah, of glory and splendor together with his creator. That's why I don't know why so many waste their time to fight, hallelujah, Christians and uh, make it seem like those who are believers are some kind of fanatical, crazy person, hallelujah. Our Lord not only wants us to be with him in the end, but also for us to rule and reign uh, with royalty, doing everything, being everything, hallelujah for us. Glory be to the name of the Lord as we will discover. Hallelujah. Glory. But unfortunately, not all will receive the promise of entering heaven. It is a place reserved only for those who will believe Hallelujah, who will ever believe in Jesus Christ and live a life in obedience to his commandment. I want you to take some time and jot down now. Say, take some time throughout the courses of this week, the course of this week rather, and jot down some of the commandments, hallelujah, of the Lord. Even as you go through it, just start with the ones that stands out to you the most so that you can memorize them and have them in your heart so that you can be obedient. Start your road to obedience, hallelujah, to the commandments of God. And the word go on to say, hallelujah, those who will have rejected Jesus Christ or live a life that is contrary to his commandment will spend the rest of their eternity in hell a place reserved for the devil and his fallen angels. No human mind is able, hallelujah, to fully comprehend how heaven looks like. But we can get a description from the Bible that shows heaven and hell and also that it is real. In the parable that Jesus told his disciples about Lazarus and the rich man, we can get a glimpse of how life in heaven and life in hell is. Lazarus here, he dies, and he is carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also dies, and finds himself being in torments in Haiti. Life in hell seems to be so unbearable to the rich man, for he was being tormented in flames. He pleads with Lazarus just to dip his finger in water just to cool his tongue. 
But the problem is that the occupant of the two destinations can never meet, hallelujah, each other. Consider where you will be going and where you are heading, my beloved, as a child of God and a citizen of the kingdom of God. As we look at the atmosphere of heaven, the obvious thing that should be known is that heaven is the best place that a man can desire, hallelujah, to be. And hell is the worst place that a man, hallelujah, can't even wish for his worst enemy to go there. And that is why we ought to pray, hallelujah, that our enemies receive salvation. Because if we don't pray earnestly that they receive, hallelujah, salvation, or if they don't, hallelujah, open up and accept salvation and be saved, then their faith, hallelujah, as much as they try, is sealed, and they will be going to a place called hell. But not only will they go to a place called hell, because they know that their faith is sealed, they will do everything in their power to cause you to uh, be trapped or entrapped, hallelujah, and sin your soul and step away, hallelujah, from your calling so that you can end up there with them very much like Satan, isn't it? Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The book of Revelation shows how the foundation of heaven are made of precious gemstones. Gemstones, the foundation of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. We are talking about heaven now. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third Chalcedony, the fourth Emerald, the fifth Sardonyx, the sixth Sardius, the seventh uh, Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth Topaz, the tenth Hallelujah, Christ of Praise, the eleventh Jacinth, the twelfth Amethyst, according to Revelations 21, 19 to 20. Imagine all the uh, beautiful gems in the world. I just want you to close your eyes just for a minute and just imagine stacks and stacks of layers of all the jewels, hallelujah, in the world, in a place, hallelujah, called heaven. How beautiful, hallelujah, it is. Even to a man who may not uh, desire or love uh, jewels and gems, their eyes, hallelujah, will be enlightened with all of the twinkling. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I went through, hallelujah, one day this week, and I was just looking at some jewelry and hallelujah of royalty. And there's a particular royal, a particular ruling, ruling royal. I, took, I was looking... Uh, at some photos and going through YouTube and looking at the jewels of that royal and uh, what that royal was wearing. And in every photo, you can always tell a real piece of jewel from a fake, hallelujah, gem, the way how it sparkled. And I can imagine just from taking a glimpse of that, of how heaven will be sparkling. What a beautiful place, hallelujah. The streets of heaven, are made of gold and gates, hallelujah, of pearl. The, gate, the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass, according to Revelation 21 and 21. Hallelujah, beloved, if you have heaven on your mind, there is no way that you can step out of your faith. There is no way that you can step out of the realm of glory surrounded by the Lord, with the Lord being your fortress, with the Lord being your refuge, with the Lord, hallelujah, being your hiding place. Never if you get a glimpse of heaven and have that, hallelujah, on your mind. If the Lord is your shield, if the Lord is your buckler, there is no way, hallelujah, that heaven wouldn't be on your mind and you would step out, hallelujah, of where you ought to be. The streets of gold, hallelujah, as I said before, are made of transparent gold. The book of Revelation goes on to say that in heaven there will be no need, hallelujah, 
of the sun to give light during the day, no moon to give light during the night, for the glory of God and the light of the Lamb will be its illumination. Remember, hallelujah, I began by saying that the Lord made two great lights, one to rule the day and one to rule, hallelujah, the night. Yes. Wherever you are now, hallelujah, people of God, I am looking, hallelujah, out at the sun. You may be looking out, hallelujah, at the moon, but imagine a place, hallelujah, imagine a God, imagine a place of glory where you don't need any more sun, where you don't need, hallelujah, any more moon. Imagine this God, hallelujah, imagine our Elohim, our Lord, our Savior, hallelujah, imagine him being our son, imagine him being our moon. That's why, hallelujah, I believe when the songwriter wrote that he is my all and all, hallelujah, that that person at heaven on the earth, his or her mind, hallelujah, that person had their eyes closed and was thinking of those streets of gold, were thinking of, hallelujah, those jewels that were glistening, were thinking of, hallelujah, their Savior that is going to get them out, their Savior that give them strength, their Savior that give them power, their Savior that is such an illumination, hallelujah, that they don't need, hallelujah, any more sun. They don't need any more night, hallelujah. They don't need to consider any more seasons. They don't need to consider any more times, hallelujah, because they are in the midst, hallelujah, of the King of glory, hallelujah, where the sun, hallelujah, shall never smite them anymore by day nor the moon, hallelujah, by night because of works of darkness and Satan and his angels, glory be to the name of the Lord. He is my all and all. Somebody ought to think about that today and declare that Jesus, the King of glory, he is my all and all. Hallelujah. I will not need any more sun. I will not need any more moon. Hallelujah. I will be fed, hallelujah. I will be lacking nothing, hallelujah. You can hurt me as much as you want, hallelujah. Because even now the King of glory and the glory of the Lord surrounds me. You can cause me to cry as many tears and try to break my heart as much as you can. But I am going to a place, hallelujah, where every tear will be wiped away. From my eyes, glory be to the name, hallelujah, of the Lord. Isn't the Lord wonderful? And that is why, hallelujah, if there is anyone from any other religion, hallelujah, want to come and debate, hallelujah, with you or debate about the things of the Lord, you just tell them, you just go ahead and believe what you want to believe. But I know, hallelujah, that I have experienced heaven I know that I have touched the hem of my Savior, physically and spiritually. I know where I belong, and I know, hallelujah, what is happening in my realm. You may see me here, but I am seated with Christ Jesus, hallelujah, in heavenly places, hallelujah. What, hallelujah, you know, I was just talking even this morning, I was talking to Apostle about how some Christians are compared to persons in other religion and even persons, hallelujah, in the world. And I was looking and I see when we talk about dress, hallelujah, in certain places, I see where those people, they dress the best, hallelujah, looking royal. Now, not I'm not talking about those who dress and revealing things and this and that and whatever. I saw persons dressing, uh, hallelujah, even just for a family party, a family outing, a going out, whatever it is, they, they are dressed so royal, but yet still, everything is covered up. I am not talking now about those nuns' um, outfit and those outfits that look like nuns. I saw somebody post an illustration, and that is very much true. 
but I'm not going to go into that right now. I am talking about, hallelujah, dressing in radiant, uh, beautiful clothing. Hallelujah. And then I said to myself, and I said to Apostle, why is it that so many in the body of Christ, they dress any way or they want to? And some of them, they allow persons of other religion to dress and look so nice, wear all of the best clothes and, and all of that. What Don't they get a glimpse of heaven? Hallelujah. And I say, you know something, they are so much unfolding, so much is yet to be taught in the kingdom of God. You know why? Because they teach, hallelujah, in some places, Christians, especially women, uh, women are so neglected, uh, taught to be quiet and silent and, and sit on the side and just be there some kind of, uh, for lack of a better phrase, uh, uh, maid or servant to their husband and servant to the ministry. Instead of teaching them that they are royal, instead of teaching them that they are holy, instead of teaching them that they are to be adorned and nice, beautiful garment, not that they have to show their shape, because I saw and I researched it myself, so I know what I'm talking about. Garments that make women look beautiful. Man, hallelujah, for everyone who is under the sound of my voice, whether it is you or you know of a ministry or women who you come into contact with, who dress like peasants, hallelujah. There is no way a believer in Christ should dress Hallelujah, like peasants, you know, people of God. Hallelujah, the same way how you spend money to buy that tight, short outfit. You can use that same money to buy a nice, beautiful outfit to cover yourself where you feel like royalty instead of focusing on pulling down or pulling up or walking a certain way so that you can be seen. Hallelujah, you will instead walk holding your head up in confidence because you know you are royal and you know that you look royal hallelujah instead for those who, who don't buy materials and get their clothes made hallelujah instead of getting the worst hallelujah or the lowest and cheapest material hallelujah you are hallelujah to get the best if it's one, instead of making three outfits, hallelujah, of lower quality where you look, I, I, I don't want anyone to get offended by me saying peasant, but if you want a look where, uh, where when people look at you, they see piety and uh, loneliness and poorness, we need to get out of that mindset. It's better to have one beautiful outfit and you wear that beautiful outfit even once in a while, hallelujah, than to wear outfits where you feel, hallelujah, less of a person. And again, I say your clothes don't make you, hallelujah. I am saying, I'm pointing at, hallelujah, or pointing out rather that heaven, when we think of heaven and royalty, the older folks, hallelujah, used to say that this place, we are having a dress rehearsal, hallelujah, here in heaven. And so if it is a dress rehearsal, our minds need to change. Our mentality needs to change, hallelujah. If we are holy and we are righteous, we will not go for the less, hallelujah, less quality of things, hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord, but we will adorn ourselves. Hallelujah, in such, hallelujah, a way that represents the king and the kingdom. There is so many women who I can think of on this Mother's Day that when they dress, hallelujah, you cannot, you don't have to worry or consider, you wouldn't see their body shape, but they are so beautifully, hallelujah, dressed, and they are so loving and so pleasant and so confident. That is where we ought to be. Hallelujah, every woman under the sound of my voice, every male under the sound of my voice, hallelujah, hallelujah. I wouldn't take recognition for this myself, but I have a husband, hallelujah, that has taught me, and it took me a long while to get it, how to adorn myself, hallelujah, as royalty. Sometimes it is because of generational curses. Sometimes it is because of where, hallelujah, the atmosphere or culture around us, hallelujah. 
But people of God, if we are lifting up a Savior in our life, lift up a Savior. I'm not saying to spend all the money you have and go out of the way. When you have the your way, when you have the Holy Spirit, He gives you all wisdom. And so the mind of Christ, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the nature of the kingdom need to be invoked in many of us, hallelujah, as we represent Christ, that others, hallelujah, will want to see the same, hallelujah, the same thing. Glory be, hallelujah, to the name of the Lord. And so, as I go on today, for a reminder to those who would have entered heaven, Hallelujah, it is a place of no more sickness, as I mentioned before, and suffering that was experienced on earth. There would be, hallelujah, in the middle of the street, the tree of life, in the middle of its street, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curse but the throne of god and the lamb of god shall be in it and his servants shall serve him according to revelation chapter 22 verses 2 to 3 and from the throne of god hallelujah and of the lamb shall proceed pure river of water hallelujah of life Revelation 22 and 21. Those who would have believed in the Son of God and those who would have come out of the great tribulation will remain forever before the throne of God. This morning in our worship, we sang the song, Before the throne is where we come. So offer praise and seek wisdom. You have torn the veil to separate. No more outside now in your grace hallelujah glory be to the name of the lord hallelujah we ought to get a glimpse hallelujah of that they will enter a place of full of full of praise rather hallelujah they will enter a place full of joy and peace hallelujah where they will serve the lord day and night where every tear will be wiped away from their eyes hallelujah the, i remind you that the word of god says that in the kingdom of god there is righteousness joy and peace in the holy ghost somebody ought to get the holy ghost hallelujah and represent and walk in the kingdom of god this morning therefore they are before the throne of god and serve him day and night in his temple and he who sits on the throne will dwell with them they shall need a hunger anymore, nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. Hallelujah. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. According to Revelation chapter 7, 15 through 17. And on the other hand, Hell was never meant, hallelujah, I say it again, for human beings. Hallelujah, it was a place preserved for the devil and his fallen angels. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels, according to Matthew 25 and 41. But the devil, hallelujah, doesn't want to suffer alone. We ought to be reminded of this. Hallelujah. He does not want to suffer alone in this lake of fire. Therefore, he is trying as much as possible to lure many, hallelujah, to his side that they may suffer. Hallelujah with him. Somebody shout, I will not suffer with you, devil. Hallelujah. You depart from me for you are cursed. Hallelujah, and your place, your dwelling place shall be, hallelujah, a lake of everlasting a fire, hallelujah. Those who will find themselves in hell are those who rejected Christ Jesus or are living lives contrary to the, to the commands and the will of God. Yes. But the cowardly, 
says the word of God, the unbelieving, yes. the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, according to Revelation chapter 21, yes. hallelujah, verses 8. He will be, hallelujah, hell, rather will be a place for eternal punishment, according to Matthew 25 and 46. We cannot simply, hallelujah, talk about heaven and experiencing heaven if we don't draw the contrast, hallelujah, of hell, because both are real. A place where those who will find themselves, they will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out of the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, as I mentioned, hallelujah, before. According to 2 Thessalonians 1 and 9, he will, hell will be a blazing furnace where though there will be no silence, nor peace, but great weeping and gnashing, hallelujah, of teeth, hallelujah. The beast will also be captured with the false prophets, hallelujah. We wouldn't, I wouldn't go, this is a whole sermon by itself, that the beast will be captured with the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf, the signs that deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two will, throw, the two will be thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Hallelujah. Why would we want to take part, hallelujah, in a place Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When we can be with the Lord worshiping him day and night. Why would we want to take part and be associated with, hallelujah, the devil and his angels in this time? Hallelujah. And season. And that is according to the book of Revelation 19. Hallelujah. And verse 20. With the two descriptions of the atmosphere of heaven and hell written in the Bible. One will expect that a lot of people, hallelujah, cr will crowd, hallelujah, crowding. Glory be to the name of the Lord, sorry. With the true description of the atmosphere of heaven and hell written in the Bible, one will expect a lot of people crowding to the way that leads to heaven. But what does the scripture say? Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, Hallelujah. And broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Hallelujah. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. According to the book of Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Jesus Christ was pleading with those who were hearing him that they should strive to enter the narrow gate, the gate that leads, hallelujah, to life. But unfortunately, beloved, there are few who find it because there are conditions, hallelujah, that one needs to follow compared to the wide gate that one lives a life, hallelujah, that they desire. Consider those who will eventually be left out of the atmosphere of heaven. These are children of darkness. Those who have, have not received the salvation of Jesus Christ, probably because they have not been told about him and do not see, hallelujah, professed Christian, hallelujah, living and representing the culture and the atmosphere of heaven or acting and believing like they believe in this Bible and they believe in this place, hallelujah, where they will end up. Those who have rejected the gospel of salvation, those who have believed, who believe in any other God or idol, those who give their worship to demons and devils, those who are under the control and influence of the kingdom of darkness, those who have chosen to remain in the lifestyle of sin, those who are ruled by their flesh and not by the Spirit, hallelujah, of God. The painful thing about those, hallelujah, in darkness and those who will miss, hallelujah, this atmosphere of heaven 
is that they don't know, hallelujah, yet. They do not know that they don't know, hallelujah, because they think, hallelujah, that they know everything and their way is good. Anyone in darkness lacks revelation and knowledge, revelational knowledge, hallelujah, my beloved. As they always approach life from a logical perspective instead of a spiritual one. Instead of seeing it, hallelujah, in the light of God's word. Because simply they don't dedicate their time and studies to the word of God. And even those who especially are those who are young in Christ and, and many uh, religious organizations, those in particular I'm talking about only those who are represents the body of Christ. They don't see things in the light of God's word. And this, hallelujah, can lead to destruction. Hallelujah. What exists in the culture of darkness? Hallelujah. The weapons of darkness exist in the culture of darkness. And people use all of these things. Hallelujah. Remember, as I talked about culture or today, it, it depicts character and how we respond. Hallelujah. To stimuli and the atmosphere. Deception is in the culture of darkness. Sin is in the culture of darkness. Spiritual blindness is in the culture of darkness. Sickness is in the culture of darkness. Carnal and carnality is in the culture of darkness. An appetite for carnality is in the culture, hallelujah, of darkness. Death is in the culture of darkness. Hallelujah. When we think about carnival, carnival is in the culture of darkness. Some of the things and the dress and the frolicking, uh, even in John Canoe and uh, uh, Fet and all of what they, whatever they call it, hallelujah, those things are a part of the culture of darkness. Why not, hallelujah, use the culture of the kingdom, hallelujah, to fade out darkness? Glory be to the name, hallelujah, of the Lord. All of the dancing, the frolicking, the showing of the breast and the body and the this and the that, hallelujah, the flesh, the drinking, hallelujah. You know that uh, there were studies uh, many years ago, and a, a few uh, years, uh, for a few years rather, they uh, got these statistics together that after uh, the carnival, the amount of babies that were born in, in um, within nine months or so of the carnival in these certain places, it exceeds the amount of babies that were born at a certain time. And since we are talking about the culture of darkness, the amount of abortions that took place after these carnival and Mardi Gras, whatever you call them, the amount of abortion that exceeded within nine months after these things. Hallelujah. As I mentioned, there is death, hallelujah, that exists in the culture of darkness. I don't only want you to see this, hallelujah, from a uh, physical point of view. I want you to see it from a spiritual point of view because what we give out to the world, hallelujah, in many cases, we cannot get it back when we are sick. When we, are, when we develop a low self-esteem, when our name has been uh, tarnished, and justly so, because we are guilty of many of the things that led to it. It is examination time. Hallelujah, beloved. It is examination time. It is time for us to think of and experience the kingdom of heaven experience the culture of heaven it is time before because if we don't know if we don't experience if we don't study it especially as leaders then what are we teaching hallelujah our members and followers if we are telling them follow us as we follow christ hallelujah what are we imparting to them about the kingdom of god what are we imparting to them about the kingdom and the culture hallelujah of heaven you hallelujah have the power hallelujah to the side hallelujah your faith this morning i say it again you 
all of you who are watching me from different places, you have the power, hallelujah, to decide your fate, hallelujah, this morning. The devil, the chief ruler of darkness himself, has always raised his children up to fight the children of light. It is because, hallelujah, it is very important to know that the devil has not created anything. Hallelujah. Every power that is ordained, it was ordained by, hallelujah, by God. Hallelujah. He has, hallelujah, only, hallelujah, acquired anything of his yes. child through deception and manipulation. Yes. Everything that the devil acquires is through deception and manipulation. Yes. Only those who have been able to break out of the devil's manipulation that have crossed out of the darkness in the marvelous, hallelujah, yes. light of God. Since all men are flesh, people of God, I submit to you that the only access the enemy has against the, the children of God, hallelujah, is in, hallelujah, their flesh. Yes. There is a constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. All the time, there is a conflict. There is a conflict. There is a battle. There is fighting. There is warring. Hallelujah. Between the will of man and the will of God. Yeah. Anyone who falls into the deception of darkness, hallelujah, might be caught unaware. Hallelujah. In darkness. Hallelujah. But there is hope for you and I today. As there is provision for those who are a part of the kingdom of God, hallelujah, to quickly recover by confessing one's sins, hallelujah, and returning to God in complete humility and brokenness. For those of you, hallelujah, who are not a part of the kingdom of God, this is a time, hallelujah, you may have backslide, this is the time when I want to reach out to you and say that the kingdom of God is yours. The power, hallelujah, that is to the side your faith, hallelujah, is yours. Darkness leads to destruction. Light leads to its everlasting life. It is time to come out of misery and uh, not just by uh, changing, hallelujah, your environment or just turning a page, but by renewing your mind, by being built up on the word of God, by recognizing and standing and believing in what you say when you declare that you're a Christian or a believer because you are sure about heaven, you are sure about Christ, hallelujah, you are sure about your place and you believe, hallelujah, in this word of God that is your sword. I tell you the true people of God, it is our wish and my firm desire but through our ministry, through Kingdom Apostolic Ministry, if nothing else is said, I pray that one of the things that are said is that Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International teaches about Christ, teaches about the Kingdom of Christ, the culture of Christ, the renewing of your mind, empowering all those who listen to us, hallelujah, that they will stand on their confessed faith. They will stand truly and know and understand the word of God. Even if it's just a few things that they grab, they will be able to stand secure as a true soldier and as a true believer and saint representing the kingdom that others, hallelujah, will be drawn unto them. And so if it is you, I want you to say this prayer with me this morning. Father, I lift up my hands to you. I come repenting of all of my sins, Father. Forgive me for where I would have sinned against you. Forgive me for where I would have sinned against myself. Forgive me where I would have sinned against others. I forgive others where they would have sinned against me. Father, I am sweeping my house clean. I am filling it up, Lord God, and standing on the Word of God. I declare that the Word of God is now and will now be deposited into my home and into my environment. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Cleanse me, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. 
I make you my Lord and my Savior and my King. Baptize me with your Holy Ghost and with fire. Let your glorious glory rest upon me and everywhere I go, Lord God. Let your kingdom come in me, Father. I declare that from now on, nothing and no one shall pluck me out of the palm of your hands. I am sealed with the mark of Christ. I am sealed with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for transformation now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. If that is you, I want to say congratulations. Heaven is rejoicing. Hallelujah. Because of your confession. Hallelujah. Go forth and experience the kingdom and the glory of God. Go forth and eat up. Hallelujah. The word. Hallelujah of God. Because as the word of God says, and as I mentioned before, there is a constant battle. But put on the whole armor of God and the word of God that you may stand. Hallelujah. You may take control over darkness and you will rise no matter what circumstances come. Hallelujah. I will continue on by saying there is usually a big contrast of those who are true saints and those who are heaven focused and those who live according to the pattern of this world. A big contrast, but that doesn't matter with you anymore because, hallelujah, it, your path will be clearly defined as a child, hallelujah, of God. The Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to Romans, hallelujah, to the Roman church that he advises them to the saying is this, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, or by the patterns of this world rather, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect and the perfect will of God according to Romans 12 and 2. What is in, hallelujah, the culture of heaven? Or how do we practice and, and get the culture of heaven on our mind, hallelujah, and become a part of it as the children of light? Well, there is salvation. The salvation of God, hallelujah, is on the mind of those who are a part of the culture of heaven. The salvation of others, very, very important, is on the mind of those who have heaven and the culture of heaven on their mind. They are led by the Spirit of God. They have forsaken the life of sin. They are of the understanding of the Word of God. Those who are not just hearers of God, but also doers of God. Those who seek first the kingdom and give Christ all that he deserves, which is pure worship, which is the honor, which is the glory, and in the power. Hallelujah. They worship the Lord in the way how they dress. They worship the Lord in the way how they talk. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Uh, the Lord is even showing me now, hallelujah, that uh, somebody is saying that uh, this is nonsense and you're feeling frustrated because you say that you're reading the Bible. You continue to read the Bible, but it's not making sense to you. You don't have any understanding of the word. You take up the tam the, those pamphlets with, on how to read hallelujah, the word in 30 days, in 60 days, how to go through the Bible in a year, but you are not getting any full understanding. The word of knowledge is coming to me. Our beloved, you need, what you need is the Holy Spirit. Confess, hallelujah, the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Let the Lord fill you with his Holy Spirit. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And knowledge and, and wisdom, as I will mention, hallelujah, is a part of the Holy Spirit. There's only certain places you can go or certain levels you can go if you do not have the Holy Spirit. That is what is lacking, hallelujah, in your life. 
Hallelujah. While I'm on that, I might as well talk about it. The seventh manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Many of you know if you follow is that I love the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the seven manifestations, I call it. Hallelujah. The seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit is, first of all, the Spirit, hallelujah, of the Lord. You need the Spirit of the Lord to fall, hallelujah, upon you. I see why the Lord had me to include it in my message. You need the Spirit of the Lord to come upon you. You need the Spirit of wisdom. You need the Spirit, hallelujah, of knowledge, the Spirit of, of understanding, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit, hallelujah, of might. All of these comes from the Holy Spirit. And also you need the fear of the Lord. If you don't have any fear of the Lord, hallelujah, your life will not be transformed because you will be saved this minute and you will walk out of the will of God. You need to always have the fear, which is the reverence, hallelujah, of the Lord, knowing and remembering that the Holy Spirit is in you. The kingdom of God is in you. You carry it every single way you go. So you will not do filthy things. You will not stay around filthy environment. Many of us are guilty of this because sometimes even as we, we uh, confess the Lord as our Savior, we are not truly fully saved. We still do dirty, nasty, filthy things. All of us are guilty of that even, hallelujah, myself. But because of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom, hallelujah, we can break out of those things and set all those nonsense of, apart to the side and grow in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit use us and be led now by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Consider those who are heavenly focused as I wrap up. Heavenly focused individuals have reached a point. Hallelujah. I want you to leave your hands right there on your stomach, even as we believe and declare that the kingdom of God is in us. Heavenly focused individuals have reached a point that they have realized that even though they live in this world, but they are not of this world. They have their citizenship in heaven. Therefore, they have not attached their lives to the lust of the flesh, the lust of their eyes, and the pride of this world, which are of the world. Instead, they have been transformed by the renewal of their mind, and they have set their minds on the things above. Say, I have been transformed by the renewal of my mind, and now my mind is set on things above. If then, beloved, you are raised in Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. According to Colossians 3, 1 through 3, especially if you have experienced the physical uh, baptism, hallelujah, by water. Again, but those who are of this world have been blinded by Satan and prevented to see the light of the gospel. They are considered as dead in trespasses and sins. They will walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of this air, of the air, conducting themselves in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and all by nature children of wrath, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. I want you, beloved, to grab a hold of the atmosphere of heaven. I trust that. What my ministry did through the Holy Spirit this morning painted a picture, a clear picture of the atmosphere and culture of heaven versus that of hell and darkness. So you can clearly decide where you want to be. If you are a true saint, having and showing high moral standards, you should never be taken off course by being dismayed. Those who are heavenly focused may suffer in this world like Lazarus in the parable, hallelujah, we earlier looked at, but they are not discouraged as they have hope of glorification. 
they consider the suffering of this present time not worthy to be compared with the glory that they shall be, hallelujah, revealed, that shall be revealed to them, hallelujah, in time to come. This is what the heavenly folk and individuals say. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us as a far exceeding and eternal weight, hallelujah, of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporarily. Glory be to the name of the Lord. But the things which are seen, the things which are seen rather, are temporarily. But the things which are not seen is eternal. Somebody ought to get eternity on their mind this morning. According to 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 18. Finally, every human being has a choice to make. Uh, so do you and I, either to lead a life of the pleasures of this world or live, hallelujah, for Jesus. Yet the scripture is so open that it says, and he died for all, even the sinner. If you consider yourself as nothing, he died for you this morning. If you consider someone as a sinner, and many uh, even condemned them, he still died for them this morning, hallelujah, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again, according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 15. And I will just go through that for emphasis this morning. And he died for all. He died for the prostitute. He died for those who have already received salvation. He died for our lost loved ones, hallelujah. He died for the drunkard. He even died for those who have committed abortion. He died for those, hallelujah, who dress up in a front fancy cars. He died for those who lie. He died for those who thief. He died, hallelujah, for all. That all those who live no longer, that all those should live no longer for themselves. But, hallelujah, for him who died for them and rose again. Consider, hallelujah, this kingdom and this Lord that died for you this morning, beloved. And this is the promise from Jesus to those who choose to follow him. That all, hallelujah, that the Father gives me, he said, will come unto me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out according to the book of John, chapter 6 and 37. The question is, hallelujah, beloved, how can a child of light maintain his or her position in light? <laughs> yes, B, this is for you. Glory be to the name of the Lord. You can maintain, hallelujah, your position. No more, com no more compromising, hallelujah, for you. Uh, BF, hallelujah, no more compromising for you. The answer is not far-fetched, people of God. Any, I repeat, any, any individual that wants to remain in the light, hallelujah, they must learn to remain in the word of God. There is no secret to this. We have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, that can give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. For obedience to God's word is the surest way to remain in the light of God. And as I close, Psalms 119 and 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Father, I pray this morning in the mighty name of Jesus that your word shall be a lamp unto the feet of those who are watching and a light unto their path this morning. I thank you, Lord God, that for that one who is struggling, Lord, that they struggle no more. I thank you this morning, Lord God, that the one who is caught up with uh, those who exalt themselves, Lord God, those who have a superior complex and those who have an inferior 
complex, Lord God. I thank you that through the power of your Holy Spirit, all of that will be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you now, Lord God, that Satan and his angels have been exposed in the life of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, I call hallelujah of the glory of God and the rock, hallelujah of God, to crush, hallelujah, and destroy every weapon, Lord God, assembled against your people and aimed at them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that we are hidden in your secret place, hallelujah, and we, are, we shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty this morning as children, hallelujah of God. I thank you that no one will pluck us from the palm of your hand. I pray for every mother, hallelujah, those, even those mothers connected to myself and this ministry who I mentioned and all those who I did mention, every single mother, Lord God, no matter where they are, no matter what they are doing, no matter their social status, Lord God, I pray that they take their rightful places, Lord God, and raise up a righteous generation, Lord God. If they haven't done it before, I pray that they start today. I pray that your Holy Spirit lead them into all truth, Lord God. I pray that every magnitude and the force of the enemy that has been risen against them, Lord God, risen against their faith, causing them to struggle, Lord God, causing them to lose hope, causing them to be in misery, Lord God. May it come down even like the Jericho wall this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. I declare that your glory shall surround them, Father. I declare that your Holy Spirit shall fill them, Lord God, even for those who want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit fill them, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Surrender, hallelujah, to the Lord. Open your mouth and praise Him. Hallelujah. In tongues this morning. Sing a new song unto the Lord in tongues this morning. Rabashi ereresi andorobo kochata ye ye. Bramani ereresi orobo sandarana. Lord, I love you. Horobo kochata yara. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I magnify your name. Fulfill what it is that you have ordained in the life of these individuals from the foundation of the world. Thank you that they have been filled with your Holy Spirit. Let righteousness prevail, hallelujah, among them this morning. And as I leave you this morning, hallelujah, I want to say to you, no matter how challenging, hallelujah, the activity of darkness might be around you, people of God, one thing, hallelujah, is certain. If one can stay, hallelujah, with the word of God, one cannot be overruled by darkness. And thus, you will have mastered, hallelujah, the culture of the kingdom and the culture of the atmosphere. God bless you. I pray, hallelujah, that we were a, truly a blessing unto you this morning. As apostle come in Jesus' mighty name. I am humbled that I was here to minister to you and bless you today in Jesus' name. God bless you and I love you in Jesus' mighty name. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, woman of God, for that word. We're getting ready to minister to you prophetically. Praise the name of Jesus. 
the Lord is moving in a mighty way. The Lord is about to move in a mighty way in the earth. For the Lord is saying to me right now that there is going to be a major shaking still in the earth. But there is a major shaking, but out of this shaking, hear me, O oh India. Hear me, ministers of India. The Lord is saying, now is the time for you to arise son, and to begin to share the gospel. I hear the Lord saying, hallelujah, even as this pandemic is hitting India, oh India, oh my God, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the believers are dying. But the Lord said, I'm giving you a chance uh, to stop this if you would call unto me. India, if you would turn your heart to the living Jesus uh, and turn from your idols uh, and turn from your ways of worshiping the gods of uh, rock and of stone and of stars, uh, if you would come to me, O church of India, if you would arise uh, and if you would pray and if you would share the kingdom message uh, to everyone on WhatsApp and on TV and on radio, do it quickly for many are dying and going to a hell. Many are dying as Hindus. Many are dying as Buddhists. Many are dying as agnostics. Many are dying worshiping many false gods and they are going to a crisis hell. But the Lord said, if I can get one man or one woman for the next, hallelujah, 50 days. I hear the Lord say, 50 days. If I can get a woman or man listening to this right now who would begin to pray, who would begin to call people and begin to share the gospel and will begin to go on live and do whatever it takes. Focus 50 days. Hallelujah. With a team of people, I will save the land. For the Lord said, there's a shaking happening in the nation. And yes, the fulfillment of revelation is being done. Hallelujah. In which it says, uh, the uh, husband was released uh, and one third of the earth's uh, population would be affected. I am hearing that one third. Uh, the Lord has shown me that one third of the earth's population is being affected. Hallelujah. This is the fulfillment of what the Lord has said already in the book of Revelation. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is looking for saints who will arise and pray. He's not looking for people who want another blessing or another handout. The Lord said, I've given handouts to many people already. Hallelujah. Stop looking for food and clothes and shelter. That's not all of the gospel. They are part of the gospel. Yes, you can feed the hungry, clothe the naked and give but the Lord said preach me preach the cross of Jesus Christ preach the power of God preach the power of Jesus over sin, hell, dead and the grave preach the cross it is the power of God unto salvation for the Lord said many have compromised in the nations and now their systems are crumbling many have developed idol worship even in the church many have developed their own church system they did not preach Christ they did not preach his blood. They did not lead many to the cross of Calvary. And that's why many are dying now without knowing Christ. They're dying as Muslim. They're dying as Hindus. They're dying as uh, atheists and agnostics. And they're going to spiritual powers. And they're going to gurus and priests. And they're going to animal sacrifice and human sacrifice. The Lord's going to give the earth one last chance. Hallelujah. Over the next few weeks. There's going to be an opening up like never before because the Lord has heard and seen the pain of the people and the death in the nations. Sadly, many have died and gone to hell, but the Lord said, I'm going to give you one last chance over the next few weeks. Hear me, said the Lord. The Lord is saying to my spirit as I share to you this month of May and June, I'm going to open up an opportunity like never before for you to share my word because hallelujah if my people don't hear the truth of my word then they don't hear the truth of the shedding of the blood we have been too distracted we have been too consumed with material wealth and position and education and money and, and pride we've been too busy about the things of ourselves we've been selfish and greedy as believers us, and it has caused many to die and to go to hell because we didn't speak to our neighbor, we didn't speak to our colleague, we didn't speak to our nation, we didn't speak to 
our community. For the Lord said, even those uh, who have called to preach my gospel, even in nations, they have got their hands tied up with politician and political agenda, and they have lost the focus of sharing the gospel and discipling those and raising up people in Christ. Uh, even in the houses of God, the men, they refuse to preach my word. You man and woman, you refuse to say what I said because your political affiliation, because of your political appointment, because you want to run for political office. Uh, but the Lord said, I'm going to disqualify some of you. I'm disqualifying some of you pastors, you leaders who are, have you been too preoccupied with being socialites. Uh, you want to be popular on social media and you held back the truth uh, of the destruction that is happening. For many are closing a blind eye and pretending like it's not happening. Hallelujah. But people are dying uh, and people are losing their way uh, and people are losing their courage uh, and people are becoming discouraged. Uh, I call upon you, said the Lord of hosts. Uh, I am calling young apostles and prophets. Uh, I'm calling young evangelists and teachers. Uh, I'm calling in new intercessors. Uh, I'm calling people who have my passion to pray uh, for the world's salvation. I'm calling my people who have a passion in my word uh, who will not be ashamed of me. For the Lord said, if you are ashamed of me before men, uh, I will be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. I will reject you. Uh, hallelujah. The Lord said there are many who will become lukewarm. They've become cold. They've become be despondent. But I'm causing a fire to come upon some people. They're going to have a passion and a zeal to serve me. And they will not be ashamed. And I'm calling them out of the medical field. And I'm calling them out of the business profession. And I'm calling them out of the legal profession. And yes, they will be professionals. But they will love me. And they will serve me. And they will not be ashamed of my gospel. They will not be ashamed to tell others about of the saving power of Jesus and I'm going to anoint some people in this hour said the Lord who I'm going to put my healing powers I'm going to put some anointing on them and they're going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover hallelujah and I'm going to fill people with a new spirit. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon my people. And they will pray in a new tone. For the Lord say, I'm putting a heavy anointing. For these are truly the end times. And the fulfillment of the end times is happening before you know it. But many are still distracted with life. But I am saying, these are the final days. The clock is ticking. And the souls of many hang in the balance. Many are in the balance. Many are in the balance. For the enemy has released the spirit of death. And death is evading and taking into nations. And they're slaughtering the young. They're slaughtering the old. They're slaughtering the children. Death, that spirit of death has been given permission in the earth to destroy life. Death has crept into the earth and that spirit is moving and death is taking out many of all ages suddenly, quickly, hallelujah. Doesn't matter, black, white, Indian, whatever nation you're from, death is sweeping across the earth, hallelujah. And if you and I don't get into the art of safety, if we don't come into the saving knowledge of living for Christ, hallelujah, we will die and go to a real hell. For many have blocked out hell. But the Lord said, I did not prepare hell for humans. I prepared it for Satan and, his, and Satan and his angels. But many have chosen to follow the ways of Satan. Many have refused what I did on the cross. Many have refused the shedding of the blood. Many have refused my free gospel. My good news uh, that they can be saved, healed, and delivered. But they've chosen rather to follow the ways of the enemy. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying today to those who are watching, religion cannot save you. Religion will no longer. I hear the Lord say, I'm moving the veil. People who thought they would have hide under religion, that religion is crumbling. Hallelujah. Those who thought they could hide under the fact of their mother and father's prayer. The Lord said, your mother and your father and your grandmother's prayer will not save you. 
those who thought they were getting away with secret things in their lives. The Lord said, I am exposing that. Those who have embezzled money, uh, God said, I've given you a season to repent. Uh, those who have taken light the gospel, those who have manipulated people, those who have not done what the Lord has said, the Lord said, I'm firing you. And I'm hiring new people who are going to obey my word. I'm going to hire new saints. I'm going to hire new pastors. I'm going to hire a new generation of people who's going to fulfill what I've called them to do. For the hour is late. Oh Lord, people of God, all I can hear is the hour is late. The hour is late. The hour, we have not one day to play with our soul. The Lord said, don't play with your soul because you could be here one day and the next minute your life will be determined in eternity. Hallelujah. And that eternity is when you spend eternity in the presence of the King, Jesus, or when you spend eternity in a Christless hell. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying? Oh, my God. Today is a day to make a decision. Get on that phone and tell a relative, today is a day to make that decision. Don't let that relative die and go to an eternal hell. Don't let that son or that daughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak to some mothers on this mother's day. There are some mothers who encourage their children to live raggedy lifestyle, to live perverted, uh, destructive lifestyle. There are some mothers who encourage their boys to be gangbangers. The Lord said the blood of those innocent who your children have killed is upon your head. Many think they're going to make it into heaven. There are some mothers, they're good mothers, but I'm talking to you bad mothers uh, who hide the drugs in your house, uh, who hide the guns in your house, uh, who cover up those hit men and those drug dealers uh, and those murderers. The Lord said, the blood, you can go to church all you want. You can dress up in your outfit all you want. You are lost uh, and your family is lost uh, and your generation is lost because uh, you encourage them. Yes, you, you bought the furniture with the drug money. You bought the car with the drug money. The curse of the drug is upon your head. The blood of those innocent lives that were killed is upon your head, said the Lord of hosts. You mothers who prostitute your daughters, you, you mothers who prostitute your daughters uh, for money, hallelujah, in this time to pay light bill, water bill, to pay bills, uh, you that prostitute your daughters, uh, hallelujah, the Lord said, uh, I've heard their cries, uh, I've heard the uh, cry of the abuse, uh, and I'm going to avenge judgment upon you, wicked mother. Oh, Haramandasya. Oh, Haramandasya. You young man. Listening to this, share this right now. I'm seeing a wave of before, oh God, even this month of May. I begin to pray, and my wife and I, she'll tell you, the Lord began to show me these dreams, and I begin to see police and shootout, shootout, all early in this year. It was no surprise when there were mass shootings taking place, uh, because the Lord reveals things to his people in dreams and in visions, and by word of knowledge, I, and so I say that to say, right now I see, uh, you young man, you young man, who think you are forever to live, uh, you young man involved in gangs, uh, oh my goodness, there's going to be a, a wiping out of gang members if they don't repent. Uh, the enemy is going to send a, a sword to destroy them. Why? He wants them to die as gangbangers and go to hell. Oh God. Uh, Hallelujah, they're not resting in peace. A lot of people use R.I.P., but a lot of people are not resting in peace. They are R.I.H., they're resting in hell. Hallelujah, many are dying and going to hell because they refuse to repent and turn from their lifestyle. They refuse to turn to the true and living God. They refuse to receive the cross and the blood and the death and the resurrection of Christ, as simple as it sounds. But, oh, Lord, Mothers, pray for your children like never before. There is a great destruction coming, uh, and anyone that is the that does not have the blood of Jesus uh, covering their house or their children or their home. Hear me today. Uh, you can say what you want, but the, there is power in using the blood of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. You might not say, oh, I don't apply the blood. That's your business. Uh, I'm going to apply the blood of Jesus. 
What do I mean by apply the blood? The Bible said Jesus went into, hallelujah, he is our high priest in the book of Hebrews, and he has made a petition once and for all for the propitiation of sin. Jesus' blood was shed for the payment of sin. So if his blood still has power 2,000 years ago, what makes you think he, his blood doesn't have the power to be applied spiritually? Hallelujah to everything related to you. If his blood can be applied to wash away our sins, then his blood can be applied to be put over our cars. If his blood can be applied to wash away all of my sins every day, all day, as many times as I say it, and the sins of the whole world from 2,000 years ago, now and into eternity, that means his blood has power to be applied, to put on, to be spared on, to put over your children, your family, your home. It's the same blood that saves. That's the same blood that heals. That's the same blood that delivers. Oh, Bahamas, hear me. You have turned away from your God. You have turned away from your God. Oh, America, oh, America. You that once served the living Jesus has now rejected him. You've gone into secular humanism. You've gone into new age philosophy. You've gone into yoga and Hinduism. You've gone into the occult. Oh, you Western world. Oh, you Canada. You've gone into the occult. You've gone into uh, sec uh, intellectualism. You go after your own mind's desire. And you turn away from the true word of God. You turn away from the laws of the kingdom of God. Because you think your ways are better. You think think your ways are better than the laws of God. You think your ways are better than the Holy Scripture inspired by the Holy Spirit with the laws for life. You think you're smarter than God, oh nation. Oh, nations of the earth, uh, oh, you intellectual, uh, you intellectualize your, hallelujah, life, uh, but you forgot that your soul needs the word. Uh, what do I mean? Uh, man should not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Uh, hallelujah. Every word from the word of God uh, fuels the true life. Uh, you, you have gone off into life. You've gone off into the pursuit of things, uh, but you've missed your own life uh, and your soul has has been lost because you've gone after other things. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And the Lord said, I'm not going to send, hallelujah, my true prophets to prophesy about house and car and land no more. Hallelujah. I'm going to send my true prophets who are going to teach my people how to pray, how to worship me. How to seek my word. How to live uh, an abundant life. Jesus said, I've come that you may have a life and have it more abundantly. I'm going to send my people who are going to teach my people how to live my word out in every aspect of their life. In their family, in their finances, and in their home. For the Lord said, I'm moving these false prophets uh, who prophesy for money, who prophesy for power, who prophesy for fame, who pro uh, prophesy for popularity, who pro prophesy to have people idolize and worship them but I'm moving this idol worship in my house. I'm moving this idol worship where you worship the pastor, where you worship the man where you worship the woman. Don't you know it's my gift said the Lord it is my anointing, it is my church, it is my power, it is not their humanly flesh for their humanly flesh are weaker and frail and full of sin and full of imperfection hallelujah but I'm calling my true people back to serving me. The Elohim him, the Adonai, the mighty Yeshua. Hallelujah. I'm calling people back to worship Yahweh. I'm calling you back to my word. I'm calling you back to my presence. I'm calling you back to my inner court. Oh, South Africa, didn't you see I stripped the men and women? You who have worshipped the man and woman in South Africa, you have worshipped and made money. You made a mockery of my people. You fleeced my people. I've caused your systems to collapse. And now the people have to worship me in spirit and in truth. Every nation said the Lord. The Lord has showed me that I'm reforming my gospel in every nation. For in every nation man built a system that I was not in. And they call it religion. I did not come to build a religion, said the Lord. I came to call every citizen that would follow me a son, a daughter, a royal priesthood in my kingdom. There is no one greater, no one less. Yes, I put an order in my body called the 
ecclesia, the call of people who you call the church, but I call them my government, I call them my body, I call them my people, I call them my sons, I call them royal, but you have made it a religion. You have enslaved my people oh, with false teaching. You have ensnared, ensnared them with burdens they cannot lift by religion. You have made them, oh God, enslaved and not free. But this is the hour. What have I said, the Lord? I am causing people to know me from the least to the greatest. They will know me and serve me. And I said, I will cause my people not to look at a man or a woman no more. I'm you, oh Lord of Ashana. The Lord is saying, yes, honor and respect your pastor leader, but don't worship the man and the woman. Stop worshiping the prophet and the prophetesses. Stop being under victimization. Stop being under charismatic witchcraft. Stop being under control and manipulation. Stop being deceived. Wake up, said the Lord. I'm moving your scales, and you're going to see there are men and women just like you and I. Hallelujah. And some of them, if they don't turn to me, said the Lord, they're going to lose their own salvation. Yes, I said it. Some are called apostles and they have lost their way. Some are called prophets and prophetesses. They have lost their way. Some are called themselves teachers and evangelists. They have lost their way. They have turned away from me. But I have not stripped them yet. They are still in the forefront. But I have fired them. For their heart is not for my kingdom group. They are building their own kingdoms and their own lordship. They're building their own empires. They're building their own finances. They're building their own brand. And it's not the brand of the kingdom. They're not leading people to the king and king of kings. They're not leading people to trust Jesus and his word. They're causing people to trust them at their word. And don't you know the man, the word of man is faulty. The word of man is powerless and useless unless it is the word of God. Hear me today. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord has put in my heart today. Love your apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and teacher. But follow them as they follow Christ Jesus. And develop your own personal walk with the Lord day to day. Develop your own. I hear, oh, no, 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 I hear the Lord speaking clearly. I don't know who's hearing this, watching this, liking this, and sharing this. There is coming a day, and it is here now. Where great deception is going to fill the earth. And if you don't know the word of God for yourself. If you don't know the voice of the spirit. The Bible said my sheep know my voice. If you don't know the voice of the Lord. You will be deceived. Heavy great deception is hitting the earth. The Bible said uh, uh, in these last days. Uh, uh, that beast. Uh, that false prophet will arise. Uh, the spirit of the antichrist shall arise. And is now arisen and that antichrist and that false prophet and that beast will deceive many and if it was not for the shortening of the days even the righteous people would be deceived i am telling you we are in this day do not be deceived by false teaching false religion false ministry false signs and wonders be stable be established in the word of god know your god for yourself get your own prophetic word from yourself Yes, God is going to use prophets to speak to you and I. Yes, but know God's voice. So when the prophet speaks, uh, you can back it up with the word of God. You can back it up with scripture. And that prophetic word leads you to Jesus Christ. It leads you to loving him more, serving him more, walking with him like never before. This is the hour where the sheep and goat will be separated. Are you a sheep? Are you one that follows Jesus? Or are you a goat? The lines are being drawn clear in the sand. Hear me today. Hear me in 2021 the lines, those who are followers of Christ, they are being made clear. God is exalting them and bringing them to the forefront. You will see the life of Christ in your life, in your words, in your talk, in your being. Hallelujah. I have no more excuses that I'm not perfect. The Lord said I'm going to perfect you. Why? The bride of Christ. We are the bride. He is perfecting us. He is getting us spotless. He is taking out of the old stuff we used to do last year. The fear, the defeat, the failure. He is perfecting us. He is cleaning us up. If I used to cuss last year, that cussing stopped now. If I used to smoke last year, that smoking stopped now. If I was bitter, angry, jealous, and hateful, that's stop last year because he is perfecting us. He is maturing us. Hallelujah. He's 
He's bringing us into maturity so that we may look like Him. That means we may walk like Him. Hallelujah. Christ in us, the hope of all glory. We are being transformed into His image, into the image of His dear Son. We are being transformed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall transform. And so, as we are being transformed, we are becoming the sheep. You are becoming the followers of Jesus. But the goat, the goat are those, uh, hallelujah, in spite of uh, storms and tribulation and a pandemic, there are many who say they're not going to follow Christ. Uh, they're still at the bars, drunk. Uh, they're still going home beating their wives. Uh, they're still going home abusing their daughters. God said, uh, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Lord said, you uh, who have refused to repent, uh, your time is done. Uh, the Lord said, I'm closing the opportunity for those to make him Lord. Uh, there's a season. Why do I know it? The Bible says, Said, the, the word of God said, my spirit would not always strive with man. It means there's a season when the Lord would come and approach you and be tugging at your heart and bring you messengers and bring you his word and give you an opportunity to say, Lord, I hear your word. I want to change. But you refuse to change. And then the Lord said, all right, that's enough. That is enough. Your season is done. Your season is finished. I hear the Lord saying the curtain is coming down on some people. Hallelujah. What am I talking about, doctor? This is as I pray. The Holy Spirit is just putting this in my heart and in my mind. For those who don't understand prophetic, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is just uh, revealing these things to me as I pray and share with you. I'm closing now. The curtain is closing. The curtain is closing. I've warned some people through storm and trials and tribulation. I've even warned some people in this pandemic, but yet they will not turn to me, said the Lord. I've warned them with disease and pestilence and famine and the calamity of the earth, but they are so blind. They have still not turned to the true and living God. They are still not turned from their evil heart's desire. They have still not turned, and they have not repented, and they have not come to me. So the Lord said, I've warned my hands. All nations of the earth, this is a trying time. The Lord is giving nations an opportunity to repent. The nations that repent shall be my sheep nation. But the nations who want to uphold idolatry and witchcraft and sorcery and idol worship and Islam and Hinduism and Buddhism and you want to uplift all types of religion and your leaders are, are worshippers of the false gods or the ancient gods of Egypt or the ancient gods of the world or the satanic gods or the idol gods. You want to worship them and the Lord said I give you over to your gods. Let your gods save you. Let your gods deliver you. And your rock gods and your gods that you offer up burnt offerings to will not deliver you. And you will die sadly in your sin. You will die in your idolatry. Hear me India. Hear me Nepal. Hear me Bangladesh. Hear me Sri Lanka. Hear me Indonesia. Hear me China. Hear me Iran, Iraq, Pakistan. Come out of your idolatry. Hear me America. Hear me Caribbean seas. Come out of your idolatry. Come out of your heavy London. Hear me Germany. Hear me Australia. Hear me New Zealand. Come out of your idolatry. Hear me Nigeria. Come out of your ancestral worship. Hear me Kenya, Malawi. Hear me South Africa. Hear me Tanzania. Hear me... Uh, oh. Swaziland, come out of your former ways, come out of your idolatry, come out of your animal worship, come out of your pagan worship, come out Africa, come out, come out of your pagan worship, come out of your idol worship, come out of your sorcery, your corruption, come out of your lies and come out of your deception, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out of your witchcraft, oh Caribbean, come out of your voodoo, oh nations of the Caribbean, come out of your voodoo, your obey, your sorcery, come out of your burning of candles, uh, come out of your false teaching, come out of your involvement in the occult, uh, come out of your necromancy, come out of your darkness, come out of your sorcery, your enchantments, come out, oh Caribbean, come out of your wicked ways, come out of your Santeria, South America, come out, come out of your worship of the saints, come out of worshiping Mary, come out of worshiping the saints of all, the dead bones of men, come out of your idol worship. Come out of your idol worship. Come out of worshiping your statues. Come out of worshiping your culture. Come out of worshiping your language. Come out of worshiping, hallelujah, your flesh. Come out of self-exaltation. Come out of pride, oh 
South America. Come out, come out for every law. Come out, Europe. Come out of your intellectual pagandry. Come out of the worship of your intellect. Oh, the worship of your ideology, the worship of your philosophy, come out of your uh, uh, worship of your philosophies of, of Aristotle and Plato, come out of those dead philosophies uh, and come to the true and living Christ. Uh, come out of worshiping, hallelujah, your mindset of superiority. Come out of Germany, come out of your superiority complex. Uh, come out of you, uh, European whites, come out of your superiority complex. Uh, come out of your idols self-worship of your flesh come out of your satanic pride come out of your satanic worship of yourself and your intellect and your country and your paganism and your liberalism come out of your liberalism Europe come out and be set free and come to the only thing that can save you and that is the kingdom of Jesus Christ come into the kingdom Repent, turn away from your false idolatry and teaching and come into the truth of the knowledge of your Savior who is Christ Jesus. Come into the truth of the power of not a white man in Jerusalem but a resurrected Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, I don't care. Uh, he's not any of those colors because he's God in the flesh. I only serve him because he's the resurrected one. I don't care what color his head is, but I know he was in these pictures we've seen around here. He is the resurrected one. He is the resurrected Lord. Jesus is God in the human flesh. Uh, came to save us through the dying of the cross. That's who we serve. The resurrected Jesus. Not these false Michelangelo paintings. Get them off your, your wall and your window. That's not Jesus. How they do? They have some pagan false Jesus. But we serve the resurrected one. The invisible one who we have not seen. But we believe. And because we know him. Because we know him from his word. And his philosophy and his teaching. And his power changed us. And we are changed today. Come to the resurrected Jesus. I speak to the world. Come to the resurrected Jesus. On all of these recorded, come to the resurrected Jesus and be saved before this old world comes into an end destruction. If it's not this year, if it's not next year, if it's not five years or ten years from now, it's coming soon. This old world is going to be destroyed with heat and fire and there will be a new heaven and a new earth as sure as we stand here today, even more sure than we stand here, that is going to be fulfilled, just like it is said. And only those who have lived this life in Christ, only those whose names is found in the Lamb's book of life, only those who would have done, hallelujah, the righteousness and received the righteousness of Christ in their hearts, will be able to enjoy the new heaven and the new earth for this old raggedy earth full of sickness and disease will fade away. These old bodies riddled with disease and sicknesses and weaknesses, they will be changed. We're going to have a new body and we're going to have a new life and we're going to rule and reign back here on a new earth. Hallelujah. That is the promise we have and we will reign with the Lord forever and ever. And unto his reign there shall be no end. Hallelujah. What is a great promise than that? There's nothing I've found that's greater than that. Buddha doesn't give anything better than that. Muhammad doesn't give anything better than that. Ah, uh, Vashti, uh, Krishna doesn't give anything better than that. Uh, Confucius doesn't give anything better than that. Satan doesn't promise nothing compared to that. That's why I serve this Jesus. He's the best option. God bless you. Thank you for watching this ministry. I'm excited. I'm pumped up right now, but I got to go. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Thanks for watching this. Yeah, I know it's powerful. I know we preach with passion. Why? Because listen here, every day we look on Facebook, we look in our phone calls, and somebody we know, while I was talking to you, someone from India sent me a message that her mother just died from diabetes and corona. Our dear sister of ours, we pray for that family. Hallelujah. This is a critical time. We don't have time to waste. We are praying for people to know Jesus as Lord like never before. This old world is fading. The people who we see today, some of them are going to be gone. Hallelujah. I don't know. We got to pray. We don't know what this week holds. We got to stand firm. We got to pray like never before. We got to live in this word like never before. 
We got to go after the Lord like never before. But until I see you again, should the Lord tarry, if the Lord doesn't come in glory before next week, if the Lord doesn't take one of us home to be with him who love him in Christ Jesus, we will see you next week. That's how we have to live. We have to live like every day is very important to us. Love people like you never loved them before. Forgive everyone you need to forgive. Apologize to everyone you need to apologize to. Every family member that you need to tell them what you need to tell them now, today. Hallelujah. And give them the greatest message, which is Yeshua is Lord. Ah, tell them about Adonai. Tell them about his saving grace. Let them come into his knowledge. That is the greatest thing you might ever give to the family, the friends, the colleagues, the co-workers around you. You don't have to do it like me. You don't have to be a shouty, fiery preacher. Ah, but you can be, hallelujah, that gentle person who calls to say, I love you. I'm going to bless you. I want you to know Jesus is Lord, that if anything happens to you, I know your soul is secured for eternity. I know that if you might not have a dollar in this world, but if you die in Christ, you go straight to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And that we're going to see you one day. We're going to see you one day. So God bless you. Thank you all for watching again. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, go. Please go on Amazon. Buy the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You're going to see more about what we've been talking about. Thank you to my daughter wife, Shalewa, for preaching, ministering, teaching, teaching a sound word today. I got to take her for a nice dinner now. So I got to go. I got to go. If you want to be a blessing in this ministry, buy these books. That's a way of blessing the ministry. If you want to be a blessing more to us, send us a private message. We'll be happy to receive a gift from you. Many are partnering with us. We have tons of these books in stock now here on the ground. Please buy, if you want a copy of this, $50. If you partner with us for $50, you'll get all three of these. That $50 helps us to share the gospel, produce these productions, to tell people around the world. But it also helps us to, yes, give support, financial, food, clothes, shelter, people locally and around the world as we've been doing for years to just help the broken and the lost. If you want to do that, please go to Amazon, buy these books. Every proceed gets you a blessing and you partner with us. Uh, yes, we ask you to watch us more. If you want to hear more teaching like this where we have time, please go to www.powerandglorytv.tv. You will be blessed by that. We're also on Dominion TV and KITV. Hallelujah. You can watch those and uh, be a blessing to those ministries as well. Also, if you go to our YouTube page, please like, subscribe, and, and watch more of that and share them. Please, we'll be happy if you do that. And that's K-A-M-I Bahamas. K-A-M-I Bahamas. And you'll see tons of powerful teachings. Hallelujah. We have hundreds of teachings on there over the years uh, that we feel are going to best bless your life. So check out those social medias. Fill up your heart and your ministry through the week. Hallelujah. But get these books. These are 20 plus years of what we've learned packaged into this. And I'm telling you, if you don't find it a blessing and transform your life, call me. And I will make sure I, I got to refund you. Don't just read it and be blessed and then tell me you didn't like it. I will, I will be a blessing back to you. But I know it's going to bless your life. Until this week, we're going to be back on sometime this week. Sometime praying with you. Put your prayer requests on here. We're going to be praying. What do Shalewa and I and our ministry do? You might not see all the people involved in the ministry here, but there are many behind the scenes, editing, producing, publishing, hallelujah, serving, praying, interceding, hallelujah, around the world. They are part. You might not see all. So we thank all those who are working behind the scenes. The blessed Kami, Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International, in so many ways, in so many countries. Thank you so much for your faithful support. God bless you all. Come on, sign on, and watch more this week. We love you. Have a wonderful Mother's Day today, uh, you and your family, and we thank you again. God bless you. Until later on, Dr. Kilafo and Shalewa, Kali saying thank you. God bless you. We love you. Thanks for loving us and praying for us. Bye.